And to have the compliment that this is one of the most amazing gowns that I have ever seen on RuPaul's Drag Race, um, it that that is a compliment, and that is the compliment Absolutely. that you want to have. That dress, and and then the thing that does take it over is that she made it herself. When you make it yourself and it's sickening, that does mm-hmm. get you extra fucking points. It absolutely, absolutely. does. She absolutely. looked amazing. The hair was perfectly quaffed. The makeup was stunning. The bustle. Glad to be in the service. Glad yes, I want to be in the number. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we're glad glad to be here. Hey, everybody. This is your girl, the very Reverend Dr. Juanita Bindum. And this is Avery. My drag name this week is... She need a man with two ends. <laughs> so, so you know how at end of last week I was like, I need to spice up my, you know, intro, outro name or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I decided that you know every week I'm just gonna come up with a nick with a with a new drag name. Um, yeah, let's do it. And this week is Shanita uh, Man. You know how Tamla Man spells her last name with two ends. It's oh that. yeah, it's definitely like two ends because. You want, yeah, definitely, definitely that. One end for the front and one end for the back. Um, thank yes. you, everybody, for tuning in to Drag from the Left, a weekly digital series where we discuss all things RuPaul's Drag Race and social issues that are happening in the United States, locally here in Cleveland and around the world from a radical leftist perspective. We are so glad to have you all back in the house with us this week. For anybody yes. that is new to the podcast, when I am on the show, I am a woman. You can use she, her pronouns on the show outside of here i use they them so you know do what you do you can literally use any pronoun for me whether it's on the show or in real life uh i answer to it all yeah but don't get stupid okay don't get stupid keep it cute i know keep it difference. cute okay because i know when you're trying to try me i know when you're trying to try me versus when you you know because i see you it is very yeah clear. We, we see each other we see All right, so let's, <laughs> I was just watching that clip too. They was fussing. Well, you know, uh, let's okay. these queens. Let's get into this episode. So, what are your overall thoughts from episode three? Um, my overall thoughts on episode three is I think it's absolutely hilarious. They're like, this is the loser circle, but I was overall like satisfied in general with pers- mm-hmm. with performance. Um, mm-hmm. We'll talk about these personalities uh, in a minute, but I was mm-hmm. overall mm-hmm. impressed. It didn't feel like um, a quote unquote what Elliot liked to call them the B squad. It didn't feel like a B squad. It felt like another strong group of competitors that was worthy of being there, and that's how I felt about it. Absolutely, they absolutely are a strong group. And Elliot, I have it in my notes too. I like Elliot better keep it real cute. Like he is getting really comfortable with identifying in the winner circle when baby you lost twice. So uh, no, re- like, honestly, it was three times. If we want to be, if we want to be, honest, <laughs> yeah, three, three times. times. <laughs> to be quite honest, but yeah, I feel you. This was a very strong group. My overall thoughts: Tamisha was robbed. There, I said it. I'm standing on it. Oh, I'm not taking God, it back. I can't wait to get into it. She was robbed. You know, I do. Um, go ahead. I was left with a question. I was just kind of feeling like somebody said it at the beginning of the episode. Just like, how many more twists do we have? How many twists and turns do we have? I'm, um, mm-hmm. I'm like simultaneously intrigued and annoyed by the twist. So we we will see how that how that goes. How that how that fucking goes. Yeah. So what were your thoughts like when I said last the week, room? we're back. Yeah, we we are okay. back in the workroom. We are gonna we are going to skip over. We're gonna we're gonna go straight into our new batch of girls. So we're not here all night, yeah. okay? All right. So our I don't want to call them loser squad, but our pork chop lounge group is now in the workroom for the first time. Um, they come in, they're out of drag, and they are excited to be here, right? Like a lot of you can see, like a lot of them are hungry because they lost that first round, so they're trying to use this new opportunity to, um, to you know, prove themselves to like. To be like, yes, I'm here. I'm here to compete. I'm here to win. And I understand that. Because if it had been me, I'm coming in full force. You gave me a second chance. I am not going to blow it. So I get it 100%. So they're in the room. And like I said, they're out of drag. And a lot of them are commenting on how attractive the group is. Um, no, 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 no. There might be the trade the- of the season. Uh-huh. And, and there it is. Again, non-black people can't be trade. Let's just put that out there. Like, stop. We talked about this episode one, but stop saying that stupid shit. Y'all cannot, if you are not black, you can't be trade. You can't be DL. Those are racialized terms that you cannot have. 
Yeah, and also, like, as we mentioned earlier, like, never in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race, 13 seasons of Drag Race, five seasons of All Stars, one winter special, one celebrity, two UK, <laughs> one motherfucking Canada, has there ever in ever in RuPaul's Drag Race history been trade on the show because guess what trade would not could not shall not be on a show like this so you do also Absolutely. you know should probably get a dictionary you know we should probably never Words. Mind, be a idea for merchandise later <laughs> uh, we should definitely do a di- I think we should do a dictionary but we could talk about that um, yeah I, I knew where your mind was going mm-hmm. um, so but uh, no, I will honestly, say if there was going to be trade if it was going to be Trey, Denali would be one of the last ones, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. So that leads me into my next question. Um, there is no Trey. We have established that. But I do think there are some cuties on, on this season, period. Not just in this group. <laughs> but I do think there are yeah. some cuties. Um, so who, which one you like? I, I, I hate myself. I hate myself for saying this. White man's whore. White man's whore. White man's whore. No. <laughs> there is no spirit of Tamara here. Um, but Joey J is really cute out of drag. Am I alone uh, in this? You, you like raisins in your potato salad? No. <laughs> no. You better stop. Girl, I can't say <laughs> I can't say nothing about it because I am playing bed witch between two white men right now as we speak. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, I know, audience, these are racialized terms. I am black. I can say whatever the fuck I want to, so get off my back. Matter of fact, actually, get yes. off my back. Sex <laughs> is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and I would love this my back is ridden this, okay? Yes. Um, but who I think is cute, I'm going to become, let me see who I think is cute. I can identify that Joey J is an attractive human being. I think they're cute. I was more pleased when I saw them shirtless, and I realized that their front was covered with fur. You know, I'm always particular to the fur, mm-hmm. folk. Um, mm-hmm. They cute. I think Utica has a nice butt. I like Utica's butt. Yes. Nice they're butt and nice hippie. smile. Uh, yeah. They're a little hippie and they tall and I'm just kind of like imagine. You know what? I'm just imagining what that would look like praying with me in the evening. You know, <laughs> praying <laughs> on my knees at the alt. You know. Yes, Utica is very attractive in her odd, you know, way. Yeah, she. This this whole group, all of them. There, there are no. Yeah, no one is I think every, I think they're all cute, all. and I'm gonna be completely honest. Tamisha, back in the day, I I, I probably would have checked for Tamisha too. I, um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, Tamisha is cute. It seemed like they would have treated me very nicely. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, and I would have got to see them fucking win all the time. And who does not want to be in the winner's circle? Okay. Exactly. So, so all in all, we can say that the, that the girls is cute. The girls is cute. The girls are cute. The girls are cute. Very cute. Um, so let's go straight into this mini challenge. Okay. So okay. it's the same format from last week, right? We have the mini challenge that is two look runway. Um, then we have the performance number that they have to write their own lyrics to and create up with, come up with their own choreography. And then they have a runway challenge category is some kind of fabric. Last week it was that metallic fabric, or LeMay. LeMay, and baby. And this week it's is LeMay. So, yeah. Lady in the Vamp. So we have our two looks. Um, so far, daytime look. Who is your favorite? Um, you know, I, my favorite look, so if we go go through, honestly, I kind of want to go through, I'm going to just start talking about Denali. I want to go through a little bit and, and order real You want to go through all of them? I do want to point out that this blue dress, I mean, we don't got to stay on it long, but that blue dress and the first one I thought was ugly, and I just wanted to say it out loud. I thought the blue dress was yes. ugly. I did not understand the blue herpes that was growing out of her leg. I didn't <laughs> want to go to the hospital and get an antiviral. I am very confused. Uh, uh, you know, Michelle Visage is getting older, and I think she said that she saw something that looked cute. She liked the thing on the leg. I don't know why she thought Mm-mm. she said that out of her mouth. I hated then, it. What does Michelle say? A lot of the things that she said, I hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it. It was a missed opportunity. I have an idea why. Because, I mean, the, the hair was cute. You could have did a lot with that yellow wig. I actually would love to own that wig myself. But that look was not cute. But the Mm-mm. funny thing about that, on the other end, if we go to the vamp side of it, my one of my favorite looks from that was Denali's um, vamp look and mm-hmm. that black uh, sheer like how it, it was like sheer and metallic and liquidy. I really liked that. It was multi. It was cute. It was see through. 
The hair was cute. She looked like she was like storming out of hell or something. So I was into that look. That was really one of my favorites, um, honestly. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you. How did you feel about Joey J's looks? <laughs> you are baiting me to say something shady. I would um, really like so to you know think, that. I would like to know that because I, I want to see you do it. Um. So you've seen men on the men on film skip from *The Living Color*. Uh huh. Hated it. You all of them. <laughs> Every last <laughs> look. Hated it. <laughs> yeah, it's I right. will say I like I did right. like the nighttime look more than the daytime look. Um, but two things threw me off from the nighttime look. Her padding, which was, it, it just confused me. I don't know where she was trying to go. I mean, she was trying to be curvy and hippie, but it just looked like you put on a couch cushion and wrap some fabric around it, and that was supposed to be your ass. Like, it didn't, and the thighs didn't match either. Yeah, I'm always, it, it, you know, a, a little partial to, um, like, a bulbous ass. So I thought it was, like, if anything, the outfit was basic as fuck. It was ugly. And, like, she looks like a mall mm-hmm. walker. She's, like, the princess. She's the princess of the mall. Um, and those boots know, she, were straight out of dots. Yeah, like, she looked like dots, made wet seal, meets glitter, meets a little bit of Claire's. Um, and and that's how her runway looked, too. Yeah, it's... Mm. And you know, yeah, yeah no. Left something. And that first look, the guess... daytime look, was ugly. <laughs> like, yeah, I have nothing nice to say about it. Balls, it was bad. All those balls yeah. and boots. I'm like, ooh, child. Are you going hunting? Uh, Are you going camping? Where are you going? Possibly, maybe. <laughs> I, you know, I heard that they don't really feed the girls a lot, so maybe she was looking for some. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, She's gonna hunt and gather her own shit. I was, yeah, hunt and gather. If it's no greater time to hunt and gather, it is right fucking now, okay? Hunt and gather. Uh, you know what, though? I do think there was something that was not confusing at all, and that was Miss Rosé. I thought her opening look was absolutely stunning. Mm. Art, 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 art. Um, it yes. was pitchy. It was funny. It had a sense of humor, but sense of fashion. Um, I was fucking into it. The proportion of her body was great. I loved that yellow wig. Her makeup mm-hmm. didn't, and I was worried about her makeup because that bitch put on a shit ton of color corrector. Like almost three quarters of her face was orange fucking concealer, and yeah. I did not see her powder it down first. So I was really, really confused. But apparently, she has a really thick beard, and it grows in really fast. And I think she has some like shaving scarring, so I see why she did that because it looked, it turned mm-hmm. out looking absolutely great. And then that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Second look to me was one of my top looks from uh, the entire episode. Period. It was very hot. Yeah, she she ate that runway. I remember tweeting it. Both of her looks were elevated. Uh, I think they were out of both categories. They were probably the best of each one. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about Rose, like as a queen. But this episode, she ate. Especially yeah, this she did eat. She ate. Well, speaking of eating, you know who a full course goddamn meal who always leaves me satisfied? That is T to the A to the M to the I to the S to the H to the A. That's Miss Tamisha. Legend. Um, the Legend. legendary. The legendary. The mother. The empress. The matriarch. The uh, just the lady in charge. Lady of the evening, Miss Tamisha Iman. That first look she came out, she gave you very, yes, I am 49 years old. I am going to come out in an age-appropriate outfit and slay the gods. Slay the kids, mm-hmm. okay? And that um, color. Into Ooh. it. That color on her mother. Beautiful. Are, we, we know this. There are certain colors that just pop on melanated mm-hmm. skin like mm-hmm. like no other. And that, my dear, is one of that them. That was she one of them. Stunning. The face was right. Everything. And I love, like she said, you're not a drag queen if you don't got on some jewels, okay? Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact that when she talked about she was in Chanel, that that was not a joke. That was not just a drop line. I know for a fact <laughs> that she had on actual Chanel. That she no, she did. And doused her body in. And I'm into it. I'm into it as well. And her nighttime look with the wigs and the all the weeds. She's a winner, baby. I loved it. I loved She's it. She's a winner, baby. I loved it. it. You cannot mess I, with a legend. When I tell you, when she turned the corner, first off, I was never expecting an Elvira look from... T- I don't think... They could have did 
a literal vampire main stage challenge. And I would not think that Tamisha mm -hmm. would be the girl to pull the Elvira reference, but she did. And not only did she pull the Elvira reference, she did it as if she was the first one to do it. It was absolutely yes. stunning. And then to make it relevant to Atlanta, to make it yes. relevant to back culture, who we literally invented the hair shows, we love a motherfucking weave. She said, I am rocking 84 inch bundles, baby. Damn 84 she. inches of hair. Hell, this is what this is what I love about Tamisha. She carries herself on the show. She's like, you know, it, it's great to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'm ready to compete, and hopefully, I win. But when it juxtaposes it to how the other girls are saying, like, this is validating for me. For Tamisha, I don't think this is validating for her. She's like, I'm already a legend. I'm already an icon. I'm here to do what I love. But this does not right, make or break the, world the, the Iman and dynasty. The, the Iman dynasty is already solid. It's already built. Yeah. And she carries herself yeah. that way. And I think that's yeah. why that's why she's so dope. That's why everyone is so drawn to her. They're trying to make yeah. it seem like she... it's because she's the older queen of the group. And well, we're going to get to that. We are going to get to that. Uh, yeah, but I just entered. love the way. I just entered. love that. Yes, go ahead. She has entered the the space um, in a way that is truly magnificent, and I am excited uh, to see what she does when the show is over. Um, next up to the stage, it was Utica. Um, I thought Utica's first look was cute. Um, it was all right. I think that she could have more balls or whatever, but it seemed like something that, you know, a kooky queen that she has labeled herself would do. And mm -hmm. I thought the second look, though, was absolutely stunning. It, I was very horny for that look, and uh, it, was, it, it was cute. That's very much your vibe. Utica yeah. ate mm -hmm. to me this entire episode. She ate. That first yeah, look I thought job. was really cute. It was really well done. That second look was one of the best. Like that nighttime look with that hair and that I don't know what to call it, but that piece around her neck. Like and yeah, it was like a rough, uh, uh, a yes. Elizabethan rough. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it was. And people yeah. are asleep on her paint job. Utica is. Painted. She's a talented yeah, makeup she, artist. She does her makeup well. She does. She does her makeup well to the point where I'm almost want to start calling her a makeup artist. It's really, it's really good. And then yes, Kamora was does. after her. Let did y'all peep? Did you peep the edit? So like Kamora was first. I mean, was last in the first set, and then she went before Utica in the second set, which meant that was her original order. So mm. she really did hold up the runway. You know, she did. She really did. She held the runway up. And, you know, she's not the first girl to do it because in the famous words of Valentina, what you going to do, go on without me? Well, the producer very well said it on this show that they were. Yeah, they were well we were going without her. Go, <laughs> we were prepared to go on without you, baby. Uh, but she looked, I thought she looked good. I thought she looked absolutely good. I do not uh. think that the face was anything worthy of taking that long, but the <laughs> outfits were stunning. The outfits were stunning. That first all white look, it gave me very communion Sunday. It gave well, me, know, I, my know, grandmother would wear that on first Sunday, stand up in the pulpit and sing, the blood never loses its power. But she will look better. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. <laughs> yes. That's well, what you it know, gave me. My grandmother is a missionary and they wear white on fifth Sundays. And I just would have felt, yeah, I, very that. Very church on a very specific day of the month. Yes, um, and you need for us. It was first Sunday. About to have your menses when you wear these outfits, um, you know you have to <laughs> time that up with your other calendar. Um, yeah, it was cute. I don't think it was worth her being very that. But if you pay attention at the very beginning of the show, when RuPaul uh, enters the workroom after the girls have come in, Kamora has the look of utter fear and terror in her eyes the moment RuPaul starts talking. And I do think that she is actually very, very, very nervous. Um, and she is not, I mean, I don't know how much she would have had to give otherwise, but I do feel like the little that she, you know, that she has hunted and gathered to bring her to the competition is definitely compromised right now. And mm -hmm. it's quite unfortunate because the group um, that she is here against, this six and the 13 as a whole is a strong group and she is not going to make the cut. Uh, what did Tamisha say? Tamisha said uh, she is, uh, she's losing it. She is overwhelmed. And I, <laughs> I can agree. I can agree. <laughs> I, I have this in my notes. I meant to open the show like this, but let's just dub this episode, episode three, the Tamisha episode, because this episode is all about her. I mean, to be honest, she narrates the episode. 
the girls are just falling at her feet. I mean, when you're in presence of an icon, I mean, what what else are you going to do? What else is going to happen? Uh, yeah. Look at the material. So this is the Tamisha the episode. Episode three was all about Tamisha. So, so the two looks together. Just based on the mini challenge, who do you think did the best? If I'm if I'm a couple look A and look B together, who did yes. the best? Um, I would have put Rose in first place for me, and then Tamisha close second. I agree. Yeah, but then Utica is really right there at third because I yeah, just I just, I just enjoy her. Look number two compared to look number one was giving me. I wasn't sure if it was like I don't know. It just. I wanted more from it. And the through line with the story was cute, but it was that those three definitely were standouts. Definitely Mm -hmm. were standouts. So this week they are um, charged with creating their own lyrics and responsible for their own choreography for remixing the RuPaul hit Female Phenomenon. Now I will say this is the first time on RuPaul's Drag Race where they've done a Ru song that I didn't know or like really know all the lyrics to. So I don't, I didn't know the song. So, uh, um, I mean, I heard the little da, 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 like the little chorus is cute or whatever, but I hadn't really heard um, it before. But they they getting into these lyrics. They they talking about who go do a bitch track, who go who go rap, who go sing, and of course Miss Rose, she let them know, baby, I'm a sing because <laughs> I'm a singer. <laughs> that's what he, that's what I tell. Right, and Joey was like, "Do you think that's a good?" He tried to like you know be a little shady. Do you think that's a good idea? And she quickly shut it down. You should have like, asked yes. yourself that before you put on them damn boots. Listen. Okay, boots. Okay, boots. We'll get, we'll get there. Um, so rehearsal. <laughs> so I re- rehearsal is chaotic, just like last week, but it's chaotic for a completely <laughs> different reason. Yeah. <laughs> right. So last week, no one wanted to take charge. No one wanted that pressure. This week, too many people want to take charge, and it is just complete and utter chaos. Like I failed Tamisha. Like her face would have been my exact face as well if I had to been there. Because it is just too many people trying to contribute too many ideas to very small portions of the routine. Like, for if it were me just going in a strategy, I'm like, let's get the overall routine first, and then we can go back and clean up little spots. But they were really yeah. hung up on little details. And frankly, that's a waste of time. So, yeah, and see, me knowing uh, you, I know for a fact mm-hmm. that you're the type, first off, you going into it, like, if you jumping into something that one you're not that familiar with, I knew already that you was going to be like, who in charge, who doing the thing, and you was going to need them to know what they was doing before they gave it to I you. I need clarity. I, I need clarity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you do need that. You do need that. And uh, But I will say this. Last week, they was on the struggle bus, and I did not think the performance was like... Like it, they did a good job. But when you look at what the girls finally ca- like came up with this week, the level of choreography and stage performance and presence and formations and use of mm-hmm. props and all of that was on a whole nother level compared to what was last week. Which I think is so funny that this is the losing group. But I think the overall yeah. score for me for the performances and the that they put together as a whole was way stronger than the girl. Like it was it, to me was just like on another class, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I agree, and I wasn't. Uh, I was last week, <laughs> and, and that's not to shit on the first group because they did really well too. But I agree with you. I think the second go around, and ironically, because this is the loser circle in air, in air quotes, they did really fucking good. <laughs> like the props, like you said, the formations, the choreography, the a little attention to detail. So I guess back coming a little bit, I guess it did you know benefit them that they were hung up on little things. Um, yeah, and they the looked, girls they, used... it looked like a group number you would see if you went to a club. Yeah, I would pay, and like I feel like that would have that they rehearsed this for months. This is ticketed. This is going on tour. That's what it felt mm-hmm. like for me, and I really appreciated that. And the one attention to detail that I absolutely love that they did is like the girls, like last week they came to the middle and did their like little part. The only person who like really just tried to use the stage a little bit more to me um, last week was Elliot. And then this week, the Girl Scout all like just used different parts of the stage better to me in their individual performances. Specifically, my homegirl Tamisha, who started at the far end of the stage, listen, walked and pointed the little girls in the corner <laughs> and pointed them in the direction that they needed to go. I thought that was absolutely um, um, fabulous. So I think the performance went well enough because you know they they made it to the stage to do this to do this performance. So uh, in the yeah. performance uh, of Phenomenon, I want to talk about the lyrics real quick. Did anybody, did you pay attention to the lyrics? Like, whose lyrics was your favorite? Who had your favorite verse? 
I love Tamisha, and it's gonna be me all, all, all episode praising Tamisha and Utica. I know, um, that's right. Uh, but <laughs> but they, to me, they did. They had really good verses, and I'm not just saying that because I like them when they're my favorite of this group. But I genuinely think they did really well. I also think Den- Denali did well. You know how I feel about her already, but I do think yeah, she I know did how well. You feel <laughs> yeah, and this outfit, this outfit with something on the leg don't don't look bad, but the other outfit with something on the leg, I'm like, ooh, child, like, girl, you like someone's growing out of it, like, no, yeah, just like, uh, uh-uh. uh, like, but like you said, going back, <laughs> I do think Tamisha's uh part was strong. They, Tamisha Iman is coming for you to show the world what I can do. Mm-hmm. Like, she was killing it. She and like, she also had like, how many seconds do they have to do this? This verse, she's fit so many lyrics in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, switched her flow a couple times and really did the damn thing. And shout out to her. She's 49 years old and came out with that fucking yes, she got the bodysuit on, legs out, mm-hmm. tit out. And I think face beat. we pay face beat, but you want to pay if you pay attention to details, she is a seasoned queen. Like everything, first off, her tights, the way that I've noticed in the minute she walked in, the way that she matches her skin tone. So the tights that she wear match her skin tone flawlessly. And her breastplate is also colored so well with her complexion. Like there's nothing out of place, you know? It mm-hmm. it looks fucking phenomenal <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenon, phenomenon, <laughs> phenomenon, phenomenon. Oh my god, it's just it's cute. And she let them know. I, I showed you what I did. I'm bent, not broken, and I'm gonna fight to the end. Yeah. You know, I'm an old school queen, and I'm gonna rise again. I am into it. I also like I Utica's love this outfit. Utica's outfit yeah. reminds me of the was it the ball challenge? Um, in uh, season ten, where Aquaria won, and Aquaria had on like that luchador outfit. I mm, love yes, when yes, yes. shades of primary colors are used together. So like the red, the blue, the yellow together is really satisfying for me. And I love the way she rolled her her weird, like a big fat uncut cock. You know, she rolled it, rolled it raw. You know? <laughs> yes, and I'm going to be saying wiggle to the top, wiggle to the top for a very long time. Literally, <laughs> this is literally all I'm trying to do for the rest of my life is wiggle to the top, wiggle to the top. Literally. Okay? Wiggle to the top. Yes, I just love, I just love me some Utica. <laughs> Uh, I love a queen that, like Michelle said, beats, marches to the beat of her own drum and is just solid in their quirkiness and in their weirdness and not trying to change for nobody. Like, I just really enjoy her. And she's just talented. She uh, is very talented. <laughs> and, you know, I was overall satisfied with with the the performance uh, of that. It was so it was so good. And you know me, I'm a singer. I'm a singer singer and I love yes. singers and singing makes me happy it makes me want to sing and rose just hitting that high note at the end of her like the winner is rose i was like genius yes man. yeah and i was like i've never heard rose sing before so i was like can she really sing or are they just hyping okay. her up and she has a voice Let, no this is what i'm gonna let you so anybody that's listening to the podcast right now including avery who hasn't listened to it go on youtube and look up stephanie's child um, listen to them perform for Sage, you know, which is an LGBTQ organization for the elderly. They did a performance for them and they sang Landslide and it literally gives me chills. Jan, it's Jan, Laguna Blue, and Rosé and they sing together as a group and it is just, they do really good things. They do have a little bit of that like um, glee, pitch perfect kind of mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. white girl pop stars, we can do runs too type of vibe. But I mean, the harmonies <laughs> lock in, so I'm into it, you know. Um, okay, I'll have to look it up. It was yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Rose. I, I think I enjoyed her throughout this whole performance, throughout this whole episode, except for this runway. Same. So let's get to the runway. Except, well, <laughs> the category is the runway, I would like sheer. To- before we get mm-hmm. into the room, we need to take a quick break before we get into the room okay, to okay. hear some words from our sponsors. So we're going to take maybe just about 20 seconds to take a couple deep breaths and we're going to come right on back. I'll see you after this. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody, and we're back. Thank you for tuning in to Drag from the Left, a weekly digital series where we review RuPaul's Drag Race and current social events from a radical leftist perspective. My name is the very Reverend Dr. Juanita Bindham. And this is Avery. My drag name this week is Shanita Man with two N's. Shanita Man with two N's. And thank you for coming back um, after our break. Before we get into this runway, we got two messages. 
um on here so let me play message y'all are funny y'all are funny y'all funny as hell <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's that's Juanita I just be laughing at her she be making me laugh so. <laughs> thank you for the comments baby uh mm-hmm. we appreciate it make sure to follow us online and drag from the left that's d-r-a-g-f TL on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, where you can keep in contact with everything that we're doing and have planned. You can also follow me and Avery online. Um, all of our stuff is online if you look up drag from the left. That's D R A G F T L. And we're going to play uh, message number two. I hope this one is as cute and kind as the other one. Shut up, right. you stupid niggers. Yikes. Okay. Well, it so... wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're upset about something. Hopefully everything's okay at home. You are you are so mad. And you know, I really I hope that you get a good meal in you today. I hope that your bills are paid in full and I hope, you know, that you do not choke on the next thing you put in your mouth. Have a good day. Um so yes. let's get into these runways. Let's get into these <laughs> runways. Um <laughs> The category Girl. is sheer on the runway. I think it's all things sheer, see-through. So, like, cute chiffons and um, fabrics that we can hold up to the light and see-through. Um, so, let's yes. get let's get into it. We can go in the same order that we did on the um, on the mini challenge. So, how did you feel about Denali's look? Hated it. Friend, <laughs> it looked like she had a bed sheet wrapped around her. Um, and a very, <laughs> like, an old, tattered bed sheet that, like, you done spent the night at your friend house and they won't ask yeah. you, you afraid to ask for a cover and they, or they don't got no covers and yes. you kind of just found this one in the laundry room, you know? Um, That's exactly what it is. is. Yeah, it's very insufficient. It does not keep you warm. In fact, it makes you kind of itch a little bit and you mm-hmm. wondering if they even use this for the bed anymore or is it something that the dog sleeps on? That's how I felt about it. And then she tried to like do something with the hair that looked like anal beads and I just was not Mm-mm. into it. I don't... And the I don't shoe. Know how the anal be, yeah. And the shoe. Those shoes were <laughs> hideous. Well, the shoes weren't ugly, just not with the outfit. Uh, it was hard for me to look at. Yeah, I, 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 as soon as she turned the corner, I was just like, no, no. And you know, I hate when like a queen just put a belt over something, but I think maybe this like needed a a, a very large belt that covers up a lot of it, like a lot of it. <laughs> she need one of Elliot's belts from last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so who was next rose oh, rose okay so this look from rose so this is what i'm gonna say i think the hair is okay i think the makeup's good i like the color of it but those those sleeve ankle wristlet ruffles needed to have been left yeah i didn't i didn't really i see why someone would like it when you say that um, I see why and someone I would like why it. why she picked it. I get why yes. she picked it. It definitely makes a statement. And I'd rather you wear something that makes mm-hmm. a statement than whatever the girl before you wore because that was confusing. Uh, but this seemed mm-hmm. like you had a very specific plan, a point of view. Um, it did have movement. It had beautiful colors. But I just did not find it aesthetically pe- uh, pleasing. So it's kind of like a taste thing for me. It's not, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. I think I would um, like it if the dress was longer, if the length was longer. Um, and if that kind of exaggerated fabric she had yeah, around her wrist was the whole yeah, sleeve. it was like a scalloped wrist ruffle. I, I just, it, it, it needed not to happen. Yeah, but I think if it was the whole sleeve and the dress was longer, I think that could have been really cute. Yeah, or she could have did that dramatic sleeve and then the dress be plain and not have no ruffles on it. Like, it needed, it needed a little bit yeah. of editing. It needed, it needed, it needed some editing, edit. But... But I could yeah. see why someone but, liked it, but I it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> and I think Ross had it right when he said crafty. The reason why he got dragged when he called uh, Shay crafty is because one, her look wasn't crafty, and two, again, be careful how you talk to people. Because color, it was racist. People. So, it was <laughs> right. Racist. Same shit he did with Candy Muse last week. Like, you need to be careful. Okay. Your verbiage matters when you're talking about black people and other people of color. It matters. In the words of one of my favorite queens, the fucking vixen, drag queens make things. There's nothing wrong with something being crafty. Is it yes. cute? Does it serve the te- does it serve the challenge? Number one, is it aesthetically pleasing to the eye? Is it actually in the taste of the performer? That's all I needed to know. That's all I need to know. It's like, is this you? 
is important. Does it look good? Yes. And does it meet the challenge? I don't give a fuck if you made it out of hot glue and desperation. That's your business. Okay. Yeah. I agree. So who's next? Kamara. Next up. Oh, absolutely not. Next up is the most opulent queen, the Tamisha Iman. Oh my motherfucking God. When she bent winner the corner. Winner. Uh, winner, 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 winner chicken dinner. fried chicken winner, dinner. Winner, fried <laughs> chicken. I mean, I want the white meat. I want the dark meat. I want you to cover. It I want it all. Put some really good some white bread on the side. I want biscuits. Yeah, white bread. I want. I want all of the items. I want to be able to choose from a multitude of side dishes. Oh my god! When she bent that corner in my mouth, my mouth just dropped to the floor. I mean, it was already open when, <laughs> but <laughs> the, the, I, I had to stop what I was doing in the moment. You know, I was praying and um mm-hmm. and just paying <coughs> attention to that. And it was so stunning. And to have RuPaul Drag Race now, let's think. Ru, I think Ru just turned sixty years old. Uh, uh-huh. Tamisha is 49 so in my opinion I think they're contemporaries of each other in drag they would have been around and performing yes. you know what I'm saying yes. um, mm-hmm. and the thing like some of these queens they were not doing drag when Rue was doing drag you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. Tamisha definitely mm-hmm. was doing drag while Rue was still performing and doing drag yeah. and to have the compliment that this is one of the most amazing gowns that I have ever seen on RuPaul's Drag Race um it that that is a compliment and that is the compliment Absolutely. that you want to have that dress and th- and then the thing that does take it over is that she made it herself when you make it yourself and it's sickening that does mm-hmm. get you extra fucking points it absolutely, absolutely. does. She absolutely. looked amazing. The hair was perfectly quaffed. The makeup was stunning. The bustle was absolutely beautiful. The fact that you could see her leg through that. So she's not afraid to show you a leg, a arm, a Mm-mm. titty, a cleavage because she's 49 years old. She is giving me sexy seductors. And I think that makes a strong statement too to not people that are performing drag and performing the art of female illusion, but people who live their lives in an identity, an identity that fits in the feminine. And you can be whatever fucking age and look fucking sickening and be drop dead gorgeous and you don't have to Absolutely. you know there's so many different ways in which you can can do that and you can embrace that in whatever way you see fit and uh uh i keep want to call her Iman, tamisha miss iman there did the damn thing the thing was done name something she did and it was that the thing. <laughs> name something she did name something she did well and it was that yes yeah uh absolutely gorgeous it is very rare that RuPaul directly compliments a queen on the show. Um, like, it is very rare that RuPaul looks a queen in their eyes and says something as pointed and as, and as congratulatory as what he did to Tamisha. And it was well-deserved. It was all-deserved. It was a beautiful dress. And the fact that she made it... And Ross meant, like, she got glowing reviews by everybody except Michelle. Uh, we'll get there. Oh, even uh, the girls went. Even the girls. Even the, first off, uh, uh, my homeboy Ross was like, if you look to the right and the left of what you're wearing, the homegirl in the middle look a hot ass mess. And I uh, totally agree. If anybody sit, standing next to Tamisha would have not even like Kamora's look was absolutely stunning, but like anybody standing next to Tamisha was losing. Period. And the girls admitted it multiple yeah. times. They said it in the fucking confessional. They said it when they was in there sitting on that damn couch. Okay. Tamisha won the runway that night. Period. Down. I I agree. Um, so who's next? Well, we could just go into Kamora since we was talking about it. How you feel about it? I don't believe her. You need more people, Kamora. You need all the people. Is the dress stunning? Yes. Those earrings had my mouth the gate. They were gorgeous. The hair, I'm not a big fan of huge hair like that. But she looked great. My problem isn't the garment. My problem is the presentation and the delivery, and I don't believe her. Like you yeah, said, she either. was nervous, um, and that, that it might be the nerves coming through, but I just don't believe you. <laughs> I just don't. Right. I, just, I just don't see it. Last week, they said Simone mm-hmm. had star quality. The Kimura that's presenting, that has been presented so far, ha- is the antithesis of star quality. Absolutely. Wow. What 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 yeah. a statement to make? Uh, the antithesis <laughs> of stark quality for everybody out there. In case you do not know, Avery is what what you call a scholar, an academic. <laughs> um, they 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 dibble and dabble in the art of of language and prose. I think that's Just what they dabble. call it. 
Just a they little bit. um they have what do they call it? Their um their bylines can be seen in, uh you know all the all the places you know or whatever they since they smart and they got their degree and they know every goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. Uh, but I feel exactly what you're saying. Like, I do think there is nerve. And even if she has nerve, you do have a responsibility. You have been charged with a task. And that is to impress us wholeheartedly every single week for the next 13 weeks. And I don't think you're going to make mm-hmm. it to that end spot, baby girl, if you are um, moving in the way that you are moving right now. I mean, you know the truth. It already has happened. Um, mm-hmm. And we're going to see it played out. Um, and I'm, uh, you, right now, to me, you are moving in a way that makes me believe that um, you might be the first one to go home. Here I was thinking it was Joey J, and now I think it's going to be you. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's like the lipstick against each other. I think Joey J is probably going to come out with the win. Um, yeah. But let me say this about Kamora. I've been pretty hard on her, but in defense, I have noticed a small trend Maybe it's not even a trend, but it's something that's starting to gain steam for me when, I don't want to say Target, but they kind of hone in on Asian American queens and say they have no personality. Um, they yeah, did this with Tracy Tierra in season 11, and it rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Um, and they did it to one of the I most not popular see... queens to come off the show. They did it to, yes. uh, they, they did it, they did it to Kimchi. They did it to Kimchi too, yes. Like, I did not see Kimchi... Um, Plastic Tierra or Kamora Hall void of personality. There are other things that you can critique about them, but they have a personality. Personality um, is it always big and grandiose and look at me and here I am? It's not always that. It can be when it needs to be, um, but I think they are. I think the way they're measuring who has personality and who doesn't is not absent of socio political understanding. Uh, it can be. And to me, that. personality to them looks like that it's always going to be compared to someone that they label as, you know, that's going to be closer to the proximity of cis, uh, male, white um, aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And when in the art of female illusion, it's going to be as close to that painted in the art of female illusion. Sometimes don't even be as spot on as, 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 the, as the queens of color. But um, it, it's always going to be that. And I think they need to start taking these things into consideration at this point. And um, I Absolutely. think culturally across the board, we know that like in some cultures, people like aren't big on physical touch they don't hug each other and some cultures people are just more less talkative and some cultures people express their feelings in a different way and at the end of the day i am expressing something to you i'm on the stage the biggest stage of performance for the art of drag in full drag i i am Mm -hmm. a literally walking performance so uh right i I don't uh yeah just because it's in a way so absolutely just because it's in a way that you are not accustomed to or comfortable with doesn't mean it's not there yeah, and I think we all need to uh, take a look at how the again, like you said, the words mean things. Words matter, and we need to really like start dissecting more uh, some of the things that we say. Let's um, uh, and I I think that's legit. Let's um mm-hmm. move on to the next queen in terms of look. Let's talk about Utica. Um, uh, I think Utica's main stage look is for me. It's in the middle like i feel like the dress could have worked if it was styled differently uh with different Mm -hmm. makeup and different hair i feel like that that um that dress could work but right now it looks to me like a little bit like witch halloween store or like i'm one of those like lesbians like white girl lesbians that does like practices (laughs) witchcraft that don't really got no Mm -hmm. power in it and I mm-hmm. pretend to be vegan, but sometimes I sneak a piece of bacon. Like, I, I just don't know what... I, it's giving me very the type of person who goes to Gypsy Bean, and you know, on 65th in Detroit. Uh, it, it's giving me very that. I understand what you're saying. And, like, I could take her leave the dress, but the makeup was fucking stunning, at least in my opinion. Do you remember the show? Do you Did you watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I don't. Okay, so... Sometimes, well, I, you grew up in one of them Christian households too, so I don't know if you was even <laughs> right. Like that wasn't allowed. <laughs> could you have Pokemon cards? Are you allowed to have Pokemon cards? Are you give no. I did have a Pokemon demonic. card that I took from somebody at school. Uh, I couldn't read Harry but we Potter. We weren't allowed. Though. Our parents said it was demonic. I had to sneak them bitches. It was witchcraft. <laughs> It was witchcraft, and, but uh, in those shows, whenever people turn into like a demon or something, they get like these black, like these lines, wrinkles on their faces, and then there's like like this like 
almost like they inhale like smoke or some shit. And that's exactly what it looked like to me. Like she being like about to turn into some possessed mm. thing. I'm just like, what is these black achy lines, boo? And the fact that she did that, but she came. <sighs> this is the part that makes it difficult. The same thing with Rose. You do the mini challenge and you fucking slay the game. And then you get on the main stage, and then it's kind of like, ooh, but I thought you, but you was a front runner in the fashion. So I do think they understand taste and how it should work, but they maybe just hit, you know, sometimes you miss when you swing, you know, you take a big swing yeah. and you miss. Uh, I'd rather her wear that than come out in something plain, though. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, look at Joey J. Now, Listen, <laughs> they told her that that's the best she looked so far. And I first off thought that was a compliment. It is something nice to say. But if this, if this is the best thing that you have no. worn so far. Ross Matthews was being shady when he said that. It, it, that was it, not it, a compliment. It's a skosh. Like, I think that's what uh, like they like to say. It's a skosh pedestrian. <laughs> it, everything from them gives me like, I. it's not relatable. It's It's common. You know, yeah. When Nicole Byer said she just wants to hang it up in the door, I'm like, that's not the compliment you want. <laughs> like they were being no. very nice, nasty to Joey J. Um, no, and yeah, I didn't like. I it. don't wear a wig thing. Actually, a wig might have saved that look for you. If a wig, Maybe uh, if you had on a really the nice right wig, and he had on. I think, um, I think it's totally fine um, when queens incorporate their real hair or use their real hair or don't wear hair. Um, I yeah. just think it needs to go with the outfit that we are wearing. This is why sometimes, you know, uh, we get braids with a certain outfit or wear a ponytail with this outfit or we get our mm -hmm. hair cut lower in the summertime and we wear it longer in this time of year or I cut my beard like this. Aesthetically, it has to go with the vibe that you're giving off. And it, right now, mm -hmm. it's not... It's stopping the look for me and also taking me out of the illusion. And they spoke about how when they wear a wig, they don't feel like themselves. But I know in drag, like we're performing and it does help us become, you know, and see parts of ourselves that we don't typically. But we're also performing a character, at least on the show you are. The show right. we cannot forget is competitive performance art. And, um, and of course, it's a type of art form where our identities are wrapped up in it. But it still is performance art. And you have to compete, Joey, you know? And if yes. you could walk into the workroom in the fucking chicken feathers with a wig on, I would have rather they came in with no wig and then wore the blonde wig with the other things. You know what I'm yes. saying? It, it just you. makes more yes. sense. You go wear the wig where you're not being judged. <laughs> you know? Well, they end up being judged. They didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? But you're not going to intentionally wear the wig on the main stage, but you go wear the wig right. walking into the... Like, it don't make... Yeah, so I don't buy it, and I, I, it's unfortunate Juanita, because I said, think they have a... You said what everything did I say? that... You no, know, you said everything that I thought about the whole no-wig thing. Like you said, you have yeah. to compete. It's the reason why queens switch up what they normally do when they come on the show, because you can't give yeah. the same thing, because you know that they're going to want something different. So I agree with yeah. everything you just said 100%. So yeah. our top two um, so... of the week are Denial, I mean Denali and Rose. <laughs> <laughs> denial. <laughs> well, I think she's a little bit in denial too because she's a strong competitor, but she kept saying back in the workroom that uh it's me, I'm the winner, blah 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, girl, we'll see. Yep, yeah. Let's ride days. that wave until it's over. <laughs> Well, Keep baby, running you, with that. You know what? Did, what did Nene say when she was competing on uh, uh, that damn show? <laughs> I mean, fucking Donald Trump. <laughs> Look, keep saying it. Keep, keep, saying, keep, keep, saying, keep, keep it. saying it. Maybe you convince Hope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So we got we got Denali <laughs> and Rose as our top two. Now, I don't know how you do feel, you but agree? I disagree. No. <laughs> do you? Do you agree? No. <laughs> But I will say, I think there is a reason why these two are named the top two as opposed to the two who probably actually really deserved it. My top two uh, so would have been... My top two was Tamisha. Go for, you go first. My top two, I could have kept Rosé, but I would have swapped for Tamisha. Tamisha would have been my top. And then, honestly, I could have also done with Utica in the top. Yeah, my top two were Tamisha and Utica. But... Yeah. Tamika, to, to, uh, Utica's first two looks were... Um, very competitive, and that last one was a true tour de force. And for them to take their quirkiness and and put it in that, honestly, going into it, you would have think that Utica would have wanted been the one to struggle. 
um, going into right. that performance on the stage. Right. But they first off, they helped Joey J execute that little spin thing that they did all while performing and giving face. The costume mm-hmm. was on point. The lyrics were cute. And the way that they performed and wiggled to the top, wiggled to the top, I'm really surprised that they did not literally wiggle to the top. Uh, it would have done Agreed. it to me. Denali's um, looks just were not on par. And her performance was cute. The back walk over, the kick, the split, the dip, the duck walk. All of that was fine and dandy. She could have been in the top. If I wouldn't have put her in the bottom, but she would not have been lip syncing for the five grand for, for no, me and to me to me every single look was on was on the highest caliber and then she t- literally took a fucking bazooka and blew these bitches out the motherfucking water like she was in the motherfucking military trying to take these bitches out <laughs> when she hit this main stage <laughs> runway that honestly she should have been the top and then they wanted to say her energy was not on par and i'm not gonna you know you know all i'm gonna say is that she deal with her Every artist should do what their body can physically do and push it right. to the max in a competition. And I think Tamisha, they looked amazing on stage. The, the outfit was right. The lyrics were on point. She moved her body, yaddy, yaddy. And like I said, we've just seen plenty of lip syncs alone already on this season where you don't got to do a kick, a flip, and a dip to come out on top. You know what I'm saying? So I think mm-hmm. she should have. this should have been her moment. Particularly, it's not statistically likely that a queen like her is going to make it far in the show if we follow the pattern of what looks like RuPaul's Drag Race. So let's give her her flowers right. on the front end. And let's not wait till she get off and then talk about how good she was and then we don't reward her in that way while she's here. Um, so that 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 was I, that's how I felt about it. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Um, so well, let this me is the say... Top two we got. So how you this is the top two we got, and I and I can see from a production standpoint why this is the top two we got, right? Because at the end of the day, this is a show, this is a program, and they and want to entertain an the entertaining folks. Entertaining lip sync, yep, that's what they do. Yes, they're so the episode. this song, so had Tamisha and Utica been the top two performing to this Britney Spears song, In I think dresses, production was like we could probably, yeah, we could probably get like, like you said, a kick, a dip, a duck walk. You probably get more performance value in air quotes from a song like this, I'm Denali and Rose, as opposed to a Tamisha and Utica. Mm-hmm. Which I disagree with because these are two unique queens uh that are firm in who they are. So I think they really could deliver the song in their respective ways. But from a production standpoint, I see why they gave us these two queens to this particular song. Because at the end of the day, this is a program. And who what who wins is not necessarily who deserves to win all the time. Absolutely. And we know that that's how that's the art of competition. Like, for example, mm-hmm. American motherfucking idol. Jennifer Hudson went on there, got her ass kicked and like, come on, look where she at now. So, you know, it is what it is. Right. What you do. Um, I will say that I do like the song choices so far this season. So uh, it's a yes. licensing thing and it's a money thing. And I think this season they, that the licenses is coming through and they got coin to spend. So I, I like I like the song choices. I thought um, what's her name? Rose did a really good job. Um, yeah. It's a pit stop with Trixie and Priyanka this week. Priyanka talked about how she hate that drag move when they go like crisscross yeah. left, right, up. I down like it because it's kind of basic, but I like that move. It's a good. I it enjoy it. Pumped up. It gets you started. It's cute. And also, if you're not a queen that can do a lot of boom, 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 it gets you a lot of bang for your buck. You look energetic. I like that. Um, I think Denali to me sometimes reminds me of the white girl that can dance. Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> I. I she can do it. She can do it. But it, 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 it's, it's not always in the pocket. She's not always in the pocket for me. And if you're listening and you're not a musician or you're not a person of color, you're not black, you might not know what the pocket is. But that's the point yeah. where you've reached, like, not thinking about it. You are one with the music. You are sitting in the beat. It's like you are, it's a puzzle piece. It's sitting right together. And to me, I always, I don't feel like she's on top of the beat, you know, all the time. I don't think so either. Um, so, it's not, I don't feel it in her body. So uh, that, and I thought Rose did a good job, but I will say Rose, she, I, I, I commend her for going for the dip, but something, Rose's dip to me is. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, as uh, Monet and Bob say, it's a little crunchy. <laughs> Her, yeah, her, her dip is a little, her dip a little crunchy. Notice y'all that we it's call a little it a dip and not a death drop. It is a dip, not a, a death dip. drop. Yeah. But Rose gave it. I thought Rose gave it. I see why they gave it to Denali, but uh if these two were my top, I put a p I would have picked Rose. I would have picked Rose as well. And holistically throughout the whole entire show, she performed better. Um Yeah. And she, I like the continuity just... of her performance. People was like, Oh, this is a comedy performance. But she was giving comedy, but then she was giving sex and dance in between the comedy bits. So yeah. also 
a lip sync is is just what that's called. I like to take it off, please. A lip sync. I need to see your lips. Rose, because <laughs> she's a singer and she also has a large mouth, she has an up on these girls when it comes to lip syncing. You can see every word of the song and it's being moved yeah. like she's performing when she, you know, moves her mouth. But this week, the 5,000 doll hairs go to um, Denali and Rose says thank you, but I think it's okay. We all will have our moment and something's telling me that Rose will win uh, several challenges this season and yeah, end up will. in the top. And if you see Rose in the bottom two for a lip sync, you are going to have to compete to beat her. So, um, absolutely. I-, I think it'll be okay for her. I think it'll be okay. I definitely see Denali leaving this competition before Rose. So, Rose can, uh, so Denali can have this one. Well, let's hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Have you, you've seen Bring It On, right? The original? Yeah. Yeah. At the end, awesome. where Gabrielle oh, Union wow. is talking like, totally to. freaked me out. I mean, right on. Yeah. At the end, when they're about to get ready to perform for the, their final routine for the championship, do you remember when yeah, Gabrielle yeah. Union went to Kristen Dunk who was like, tell your girl she's a half a second behind on all her moves? That's yep. Denali. <laughs> Denali is the girl that's half a second behind on all her moves. Yeah, she's uh, killing it. She's doing the damn thing, but it's just, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little more. Yeah, you can tell she's well, thinking about that... all of it. Yeah, and that and that's it. And some of that plays into I don't know, whatever. Plus, I think your body physically just moves a little bit differently on ice as well. So uh, she may be yeah. stronger on you know in a different medium with the movement and the way that the that the beats work. But I do think she's a strong competitor. She's just not my favorite in terms of competition. Um, so yeah. that's and I feel a way about that. white people voting. They can't vote either. Every day. <laughs> I'm just I'm not I'm not saying they can't. I just say I feel a way about it. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you have feelings and emotions. That's important for us to emote our feelings. Well, thank you everybody for <laughs> Let's listening. Let's wrap this, this up. Is this week's episode. Right, right, right. This is today we have reviewed episode three of season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Drag from the Left. My overall grade for the episode this week, I think it was surely entertaining. So I will give this a B minus. I'm going to give it an A, uh, mainly because of Tamisha Yvonne. Well, every episode that she's on is a winner for me, baby. Um, And with that said, we will see you all here next week from Jack from the Left. If you would like to stay live and tune in with us, we're about to transition into Call In, Call Out, the exclusive after show for Jack from the Left when we talk specifically and exclusively about racial implications, social justice, and the greater political landscape using drag race as the primary examples for those things. So stick in with us for another minute or two, and we will transition right on into that. Um, so thank you all for being here. We'll get started with Call In, Call Out in just a moment. Yes, thank you. Let's take a short break. <laughs> 